In this video, I'll find the limit as x sub post 0, 1 minus cosine of x all over sine x. Now, first of all, whenever you are given a limit question, the first thing you should do is whatever the x value is approaching to, put that into x here in the function, and uh, into the limit. Then if you get the answer right away, you get the answer. If you don't get the answer, you have to do further work to get to the answer. So let's try putting 0 into x here first and see what happens. So let's try that. 1 minus cosine of 0. We put 0 into x here. All over sine 0. What's that equal to? Now if you put in the calculator, cosine of 0 is 1. Uh, sine 0 is 0. Now, 1 minus 1 is 0. Bottom is 0. Okay. Now, you get the answer 0 over 0. That's not the answer you're looking for. It's an indeterminate form. So you have to do further work to get to the answer. So what can you do that you can get to the answer here? Okay, so take a look at this. Limit as x approach 0. 1 minus cosine of x. Or divide by x. Okay. So the thing is, we have 0 in the denominator if we put x equal to 0 into sine x. So we have to actually get rid of the sine x so that we don't have something divided by 0. We cannot have a number divided by 0. Okay. Um, or we can modify the sine x so that it's no longer 0. Right? When we put in 0. But how do we do that? Okay, so what we can do is look at the numerator here, 1 minus cosine of x. Thinking of maybe multiplying by its conjugate, which is 1 plus cosine of x, on top and bottom, so that it doesn't change the limit, because that way, you can actually make it into 1 minus cosine square x, which is sine square x. Maybe you can cancel off the sine x here. Multiply by, let's say, 1 plus cosine of x. And of course, if you do that to the numerator, you have to do that to the denominator as well. 1 over cosine of x. Okay, so now, because that's just 1, anything multiplied by 1 is still that something, right? So I have not actually changed the original limit. But the top here would have become this. Limit as x approach 0, the top would be 1 minus cosine square x. Or divide by, okay, so this will be sine x times 1 plus cosine of x. Okay, now 1 minus cosine square x is sine square x. We know that from the trigonometry identity. So that is sine square x on the top now. Or divide by sine x times 1 plus cosine of x. Okay, now, sine square x, one of them can be cancelled out with the sine x here at the bottom. So we have limit as x approach 0. So the top is just sine x. All divided by, now, the sine x will be cancelled out with one of the sine x on the top. So we have just 1 plus cosine of x left. Okay, now, can you put 0 into x now? Yes, you can. So let's do this. So we put sine 0 okay uh, let me write better here so sine 0 all divided by 1 plus cosine 0 and we know that sine 0 is 0 cosine 0 is 1 so 1 plus 1 so we have 0 over 2 which is 0 Okay, at least that's the proper answer we're looking for. Now, how about this? Looking at this at the beginning, I put 0 into x here, and we get 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. That means we can also use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. Let's see if we also get 0 here. Okay, so this time I will use L'Hopital's rule. Okay. So that means I have to do this limit as x approach 0, right? Take the derivative of the numerator, which is 1 minus cosine of x, over the derivative of the denominator, which is 
sin x. Okay, so limit as x approaches 0. Okay, what's the derivative of 1 minus cosine of x? Now, the derivative of 1 is 0. Cos derivative of cosine of x is negative sine x. But minus and negative sine x is positive sine x over what is the derivative of sine x? Cosine of x. Okay, now we can just put 0 into x here. Sine 0 over cosine of 0. And we know that sine 0 is 0. Cosine 0 is 1, 0 over 1 is 0. Oh, we get the same answer here. 0 and 0. Okay, so we can say that limit as x approaches 0, 1 minus cosine of x over sine x is equal to 0. Hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.